because I just hit the button. So we're off and running. Woo! I'll see you on the guy. Greetings, everyone. That's right. We are back. Oh, no. I did not put on the headphones. I wonder if we're getting an echo. You getting an echo from my end? No, I'm not getting any echo on your end. Are you getting any more echo on my end? So than that's normal? good. Good. Well, fuck yeah, man. I hate wearing them here, you know, because I wear glasses and the headphones like press glasses in the ears. Oh, yeah. Pissing yeah, yeah. Man, I just woke up from the most awesome nap because I, I picked out on Udon, U D O N. It's it's a type of Japanese noodle. Um, I'm sure that the members of uh, Domo Sana are, are well familiar with the Udon noodle there. All right. Um, but um, is it uh, Thai, Vietnamese? It's a Japanese, Japanese. noodle. All right. Um, very, very. Uh, it's a comfort food in southern Japan. And so, you know, as I was eating my fried udon noodle with the tempura and all that stuff, I, I couldn't help but think about our, our good friend, James Corbett. Well, yeah, because he's and over I, there he's in been Japan. The round. He's been making the rounds. I've, I've seen him like on three or four other shows. Um, oh, yeah? Which oh, ones? Oh, man, I was going to. I, I forgot about the Roseanne thing. I, I keep forgetting to watch that. Oh, don't bother. There's no reason. She to. was on the union of the un anyway. Yeah. And it was it was basically just two hours of everybody else on the panel kissing her ass. After after she was like uh twenty, thirty minutes late showing up because apparently she couldn't use the internet in Hawaii or something. So she had to call in on her phone. It was, I don't know, some fucking boomer All tech right. issue or some shit. Well, hopefully I'm, I'm getting this wrong and my memory is just, stupid. but, um, it's like Roseanne was always totally ride or die for some Zionists, but maybe I'm, well, she's Maybe. Jewish. Right. I mean, I, I've heard her give the speech several times about how super duper turbo fucking awesome Israel is. And it's always made my skin crawl. So I wouldn't expect that she's had some huge change of heart because of, you know, what Hamas did on October 7th. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't recall them spending a lot of time discussing that in the episode. What I remember from it was uh, basically a lot of, oh, Roseanne, I grew up watching you on television and I oh, love your stand up. And, and like when Roseanne would talk, which was most of the, the, the back 90 minutes, right? Cause she, she basically just dominated the entire forum. As she does. Uh, well, as they allowed her to do. Right. Um, it, it was all her, you know, again, uh, talking about herself and uh, how everyone in Hollywood is corrupt and she's been blackballed and yada, yada, yada. Is basically all, you know, victim backstory. Right. So I wasn't impressed. I was not impressed at all. Matter of fact, I, I let uh, Union of the Unwanted know that I wasn't impressed. I th actually thought it was their worst episode ever. Well, you know, you really cheered me up. I've really been mentally kicking myself because that's on my to-do list now for like over a week. But then I like, you know, I'm not blaming the weeds. I'm actually giving credit to the weeds that you know, I, I was going to do it. And then I got high and didn't. And, you know, I just can't really get excited for celebrities or anything. You know, maybe if I cared more about my brand and marketing of the Yona, you know, if I, if I could just put a little bit more effort into the cloud shop. Maybe I could give a fuck about it really appearances, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm working, Chris. Working on it. I just don't give a fuck right now. That that's my problem. But that's kind of my thing, you know. When people get the Yona, 
and they want to get back harder. There's two things you're pretty much looking for. He gives no fucks, but he gives weed. So there you go. Because, right. you know, everyone knows a, a friend with weed, friend indeed. Absolutely. You know, especially if he's got the good stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm. You know, Yoda got that gas like. Like Bucky's, you know what I'm saying? But when you fuck with the Yoda, you're pulling into a Texas gas station with so many gas pumps, you have to take a golf cart to go pay for your gas if you're going to walk inside and pay it. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Texas size. I'm just, Everything I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of the hero worship, especially in uh, the independent media. Because again, isn't oh. isn't the independent media supposed to be about doing your own thing and not really giving a fuck what anybody else thinks? How are you going to mention hero worship and not mention Bobby Kennedy? You know, and I, I want to uh. apologize to all the Grand Theft World Liberty Radio listeners and viewers and fans. Um, twice I've had the opportunity to turn on my recording device and transform into El Corresponsal and do some actual field journalism with Bobby Kennedy, you wow. know, Wobbly Bobby Jr., who, who's been making the rounds in West Virginia. And both times, I was like, yeah, yeah. Because when you, when you I mean, set this satire. off, was, you mentioned hero worship. And it was like both times, it was like a rock concert feel of people just uh, yeah. like, like the Beatles or something. Yeah. People going and all the, because there's a huge following in the United States of the Royal Kennedy family. And they behave in the same way of the British following of the Royal family in England. And it's absolutely disgusting. Anyways, I, I can't really think about it anymore. It's going to make me. Earl, gross. <laughs> well, like, I mean, the some hero good was comedy like, bits out. Oh of my it. god, he's a Kennedy, and they killed his dad and his uncle too, and his cousin. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Care. Yeah, I don't care. Like, what wasn't wasn't this supposed to be the country of rugged individualism? Like, isn't that one of the principles that it, it was supposedly founded on, allegedly? You know, isn't that yeah, what I they mean, that, beat that into our heads case. in the government indoctrination centers? But, but you're talking about pre-Bernasian America. We're in a post-Bernasian reality now. Um, you need to think about your sponsors. And Dude, we're in a post-reality reality. <laughs> think about all the commercial revenue we can get, you know? And More now, ads, please. Remember, weren't you the one telling me of the bullshit poll that Americans say yeah. that they want more ads. Yeah. And fuck paying for live streaming without ads. Everyone wants more ads, according to our boss hit poll. That's right. Even YouTube, uh, their metrics show that people love the ads. Absolutely. Nobody ever hits the skip button. That's right. Like the 0.01% of the time that they actually present it to you now. That's right. See, see, Mr. Burns? Smithers is not lying when he says yes to you all the time. It's because you're fucking awesome and all your ideas are the dog's right. bollocks, as they say in your old blighty. It's the dog's bollocks, which is good, which is, you know, kind of weird because bollocks normally, if you have a British person says bollocks, it means bullshit, right? You right. Know, an ass, but it's the dog's bollocks. Now it's good. I, I love those idioms. Those, those uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's what that is. That's an idiom. You know, things that don't really translate, you know. Because, hmm. I mean, if you say in American English, wow, that was dog's asshole. <laughs> it's like, what? What? Yeah, you'd, you'd start getting some funny looks. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I meant the dog's bullock. Just going to step out and blow me a bag then. I'm sorry, what? Oh, sorry, I'm in America. Just going to have me a cigarette. Well, well, what did you say before, British dude? Oh, God. That's English? Yeah, we speak American, not English. Oh. 
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, idiom as defined by, who is this, Wikipedia? Yeah. You know, no higher authority out there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, definition of idiom, combination of words whose meaning cannot be understood by combining the meaning of the component words. That's fantastic. I got to say, Albert Cross did a great job editing that Wikipedia entry. Um, and I or is it Philip Cross? No, it's uh, Christopher Cross. Bailey takes me away. No, that's a different cross. Right. Anyways. Um, I was thinking it was time to jump. <laughs> Daddy Mac and Mac Daddy in the house, you know? All right. Hey, let's everybody put our clothes on backwards like Chris Cross. <laughs> Wow, man! Recorded, uh, managed to hook up with one of my old friends from West Virginia last night, late, like as the show was going. The the music potluck last night. My buddy reaches out to me. Um, I was like, "Hey, what you been doing, man? Ain't heard from you in a while." He's like, "Oh man, the last year and a half." really got into music big time I, I finally started recording myself rapping and everything i've been leasing beats and and i pay for my beats and there's this one producer that gives me real cheap beats and everything and i was like you lease your beats you, you pay for beats and got yeah. me to thinking hmm i need to sell out more often i can be making money off this beat yeah. Which I mean, I do occasionally, you know, it's on bank camp and you can buy it. But anyways, I was like, hey, dude, you know, if you need some beats, holler at your Yona, man. I, I got I got beats for days, man. I, Yona got more beats than Dr. Dre headphones, son. You know what I'm saying? I was like, just holler at me. He's like, oh, well, I, he's like, well, maybe. I was like, wait a second. Let, let me send you some. He's like, well, you know, I, I'm trying to get more exposure and everything. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you ever had any of your songs played on the radio or anything? Oh, no, I've just been messing around for a year and a half. I was like, I, I was like okay, let's, let's collaborate. And then again, he's like, well, I don't really know. I was like, okay, all right, wait a second. I'll give you a couple songs. So I sent him um, an idle track from uh, my Red Fella album with Dead Fella and Dr. Dennis. Uh, Capitalistocracy. And then I sent him um, Thrill Billy Gone, the one where I cut up uh, Dave Chappelle character, Clayton Bixby, the, you know, the boogie boogie. <laughs> With the BB King and all that. And he's like, oh, that's, that's pretty decent. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, maybe we can collaborate one day. Then I sent him Vegetate. Oh, yeah. Immediately messages me back, dude. Make a beat. Will we, will you make a beat. Send me something now. Oh, okay. So then he sends me back this. He's like, here, here's one of the new beats from another producer that I mess with. Oh, well, how much do we got to pay for it? Oh, well, then here's a YouTube cop. Oh, good, because I ain't paying for chat. Um, right. So I, I get this beat and I'm listening to it and I'm like, eh, eh. all right. It, it's like one of these old school Snoop Dogg type beats. Okay. You know, and <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I just got done making a song using a Snoop Dogg beat from the Dog Pound that was made by, uh, that nigga Daz, I'm not sure his real name, but it doesn't matter. I think it's Daz. And, uh, it's just Daz. Yeah. Daz with yeah. Uh, the, the dog. Other, the other one is his stage name. Right. Yeah. But his actual name is Daz, Daz Derringer. And uh, so, and that song was a remix of Lil Yachty's Minnesota. Does it get called a Minnesota? Go to Minnesota, and I made that like I don't know, two or three days ago. And the uh, the beat, the bass line, and and the backing track that I used for it was 
Snoop Dogg's Bomb Ass Pussy, which beat made by Daz. So I get this Snoop Dogg beat, and it's more like one of the ones you would hear like on the chronic. You know, it's got like a George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic bass on and everything. But it's really slow. It's like 95 beats per minute. Wow, that is slow. Especially and by today's standards. So then... Uh, like if you're not in triple digits, you're not getting played most time. I'm like... So, so then I message him on my back, and I'm like, uh, this back and track is okay. But uh, I was like, give me a few minutes to put those DJ high Yona touches on it. Let, 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 let's get this little bit, you know, I'm going to have to mess with it. So I had to pitch it down and change the BPM, and I crank it up, I think, to like 126 or something from wherever it was and speed it up almost 40%. But then, then I, you know, I'm adding in all this stuff, shake your booty and robot voice tags. And I had to make him his own tag. And then finally I get it all done. I send him the track back. He's like, oh, wow. Yeah, that slaps. That's pretty good. Uh, and he's like, man, I already got my lines. I'm going to go ahead and record my part. I'm like, well, you got a studio? He's like, yeah, man, I got a studio here in downtown. I'm getting all excited and everything. He sends me back his vocals. Oh, man. Well, what a difference. You know, two and a half years and 600 songs. Makes. <laughs> <laughs> I get his audio. Oh my god. Like even the 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 lightest shade of color inside of the waves is fucking out. Like it's so fucking red line. Mm. I, I almost almost couldn't even use it, man. I like go through and quantize it. I'm doing everything to pull it down to get it to stop red lining. Right. And well apparently that's what the kids like these days. I don't, oh. I don't like just, yeah, just all blown out. And uh, I call it unlistenable because I can't listen yeah, to it, it for more than a couple of minutes. It was unlistenable. And it took me like 20 minutes fucking with the stuff. And then I finally get just the sound quality to where I can deal with it. And then I go to match it up with the track and it's just not. Enough. And he starts messing me. What you think about it, man? I killed it on that rat. Then I was like, "Yeah, man, killed it, bro. It's you killed it until it died from it." That's right. Seriously, dude. Um, like, well, we, uh, well, what's it sound like? I was, I, I'm working on it right now. Give me about oh, about another thirty minutes. Jesus Christ! I'm having to go through syllable by syllable, word by word, line it up to the uh. beat. You know. And I figured that song would be like, you know, three or four minutes long and there'd be two or three verses. The song ended up being like two minutes and 15 seconds. But hmm. anyway. yeah. I, I, by God, I did it. You know, I, I had to use a lot of effects on his voice, but uh, by God, I hammered that one out. Shit out a video this morning before I work. Um, and uh, of course, get done with the song. Send it to him. He's like, "Oh my god, that!" Helps. He's like, uh, "You gonna do a remix? A remix? <laughs> of course." <laughs> uh, and so I picked out one little hook that he did in there where he's going dick, 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 dick in her face, and. Uh, so I made the Dick in Her Face remix, um, which is called the Faceful remix. You know, I think it was like a hot dog meme with the hot dogs slamming her face, you know. Um, <laughs> and and so then I, I sent him the remix. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, he's like, are you going to make a music video? I was like, well, of course. He's like, are you going to put... Um, I don't think he looked at, like, your channel or anything. I don't think no, he was he, clued in no, to he, he the level of the Hyona. He didn't know. He didn't know. So 
I was like, sure. And so I was like, uh, let me send you some videos I've made already. And I sent him the video for uh, Moloch that I did with uh, Dead Fella and Dr. Dennis uh, and uh, Essence, hmm. which I did with uh, Recycle Bin Laden, B1, and Dead Fella. That's the one where I write about narrative shifted and Biden snipped it. Yeah. Um, good one. Good track. Um, he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, Man, those are really good videos. He's like, uh, you're going to put John Denver on our video? John Denver. You know, Country Roads. Take me home. Bro, it's like, I was like, yeah, sure, man. Sure. Yeah, I do that on every video, right? So that that's the first time West Virginia truth rapper Yona has actually <laughs> done the John Denver uh, the full treatment, which I you know I have a little clip that I put on a lot of my songs, you know, almost dead. Uh, which is yeah, that's been on the from that, which is normally about all that I can take, and I don't know. I was going to say how many times, but suffice it to say. Every single time I play live in West Virginia, it's always a request. Every single time, and then forces Yona to be the Billy huh. Corgan asshole that comes up and just smashes your pumpkins like a Gallagher fucking comedy show. Because I, I have to say, that's interesting. Sorry, I, I, I don't do covers, and whenever I tell people I don't do covers, I immediately cover John Prine's "I Remember Everything." Just to contradict myself. Sorry. Sorry, I don't do covers. All right. This next song was written by John Prime. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's interesting though. Because that that gets the the wheels in my mind turning. Uh because, you know, John Denver was not necessarily innocent of connections to federal government, intelligence agencies, mafia, right. and uh, and all that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, that, that was, again, during the time where a strong sense of <coughs> national identity was being pushed, even at the state level, you know, be proud of the state you're from. I'm, I'm <coughs> a, you know, proud son of Virginia, right? Me too. Yeah. Let's hear it for the new Dominion state. That's right. So it, it just makes me wonder if maybe that song isn't a little bit of MK Ultra programming. You know, it's well uh, the best part it's kinda, about it's it. It's got the nostalgic element. Um of course John Denver is not from West Virginia. Nope. And when you listen to the song. The only part of the song that's actually about West Virginia is when he says, Mountain Mama, West Virginia. The entire rest of that song is about Virginia, not West Virginia. Really? I mean, Blue Ridge Mountains, yeah. Shenandoah River. Bro, we're talking, man. You're like over in Harrisburg and Charlottesville and shit, man. Yeah. Blue Ridge Mountains. I mean, Shenandoah Valley is where I grew up. Yeah. That's, that's in Virginia, Virginia, man. You're, that's in Virginia. That's 95 and I 81. And come on, bro. Bruh. Ain't no part of the Blue Ridge in West Virginia. Ain't no part of the Shenandoah Valley in West Virginia. Ain't no part of the James River in West Virginia. But, um, you know, I mean, literally, if he just said Virginia instead of West Virginia during the chorus, it wouldn't be of the West Virginia state song, de facto. Hmm. But, I mean, well, it's, yeah, it's that's part kind of, of the weird. cognitive dissonance, right? That's I what mean, it makes would be it like, an effective mind control tool. It would be like if South Carolina made this song their state song because it mentions Charleston during the chorus, 
But the whole time it's singing about Raleigh, Durham, and Asheville, and the Biltmore Estate, and everything. You're like, why is this South Carolina State song? It, it's just singing about North Carolina. But it, that's always my take whenever I hear Country Roads take me home. Literally every other line of the song is about geography in Virginia, not West Virginia. But, you know, to be fair, I think on two different occasions, one of them is when I was in at uh, right next to Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs where I wrote the song Colorado Cuisine. And I had to explain to a guy that I was from West Virginia, not Western Virginia, and <laughs> newsflash, West Virginia is a state now. And you can thank Abraham Lincoln for that. Don't worry, folks, as promised over a week ago, coming for you honest abe it's gonna happen here in a little while don't yeah, worry folks. that's what we call foreshadowing fuck you up Lincoln. grass is mine buddy i'm gonna fuck you up like that cabin boy one that you and ulysses s grant pack passed oh, back and forth this sounds personal I mean, turns out you know there is a rich tapestry and tradition of North American man boy love, um, especially when it comes yeah. to the White House. Yeah, the, there's the, even, the pedophile. Uh, there's like an NGO kid built around Satan it. worshiping motherfuckers. Um, they've been around for generations. Yeah. Well, all the way back to uh, uh, the Greeks, as far as we know. Yeah. I mean, well, if you think about it, in the beginning, the Egyptians invented sex. Mm hmm. And then the Greeks decided to introduce partners into right. the sexual process. Right. Then the Romans decided to introduce women. Right. Um, but, you know, when the Greeks got it, they thought, well, you know, you can have sex yeah, with another you, man you, or maybe even a boy. You, and that, you that's always what start with the children. Always. Yeah. And, and doesn't they matter started what you're kids. doing. If you if you're working with a mass of people, just save yourself the time and trouble. Forget about the adults; they're a lost cause. Just write them off. Start with the children, and that's why uh, the Apostle Paul, who is so prolific in writing his letters, you know, what Paul's letter to the good folks in Ephesus, right? Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul's letter to Galatia and the Galatians and Thessalonia and all these different places across Greece. But there's one place in particular that Paul just kept writing letters to over and over. And there's what, what, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and those fucking Corinthians, man, because right there you're on there the were a lot border of, of the Peloponnesus. Yeah. The lower extremity of Greece, home to the Spartans. Or is yeah. it Spartan? Well, and those, <laughs> Wait till 300 Spartans. They were the ones that made the really nice leather, the too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, or as Donald Trump would say, two Corinthians walk in a bar. Am I right? Am I right? Two Corinthians. Um, anyways, uh, uh, when the pandering fails. Um, anyways, yeah. shout out Liberty but, University. Um, <laughs> and so the Corinthians. Uh, I don't know if we want to shout out Liberty University. Hold on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we might that, have to that, send that, that one, one to the Jerry judges. Falwell? Yes. You know what? The, I've never done this before, but I am rescinding the, <laughs> Please, the previous you. <laughs> shout out. I, you know, n next time I shout out a university, it's going to be. Um, Oh fuck! I don't. I, I don't think. think I don't now. think Jerry Falwell was born in Virginia either. No. I'm going to fact check myself. Maybe I should shout out Prager University instead. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I. Lightning is striking twice. Okay, that shout out also being rescinded. Fuck you, Prager. Anyways. Oh, shit. I'm full of shit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. Falwell 
uh, that being Jerry, and his twin brother Gene were born in the Fairview Heights area of Lynchburg, Virginia on August 11th, 1933. Well, let's hear it for Lynchburg. Go Hokies! Yeah. That's Hokie country there. Yes, it is. That is not the Cavalier part of the, of the state. That, that's no. deep into some Hokies. That's still in the mountains. For, for the uninitiated, that, that would be Virginia Tech. Right. And a hokey is a turkey. Stop the laughing. Stop your jokes. A hokey is a fucking turkey. All right. Oh, Moving they watch on. college football. They know all about Virginia Tech. And probably college basketball, too. I think the basketball team was good for a couple of years, at least. Yeah. Wait, take way back to what? Ralph Sampson? Was it that Where far back? I don't know. Um, Bimbo Cole's one of the best uh, point guards to ever play college ball. That was Virginia Tech when they were in the Metro Conference playing Louisville. Well, when they were coached by Denny Crubb. Yeah, years. my father was actually a Virginia Tech graduate, so I had that shit shoved down my throat growing up. Oh, Keith. Yeah. Oh, Keith. And, you know, it, it amazes me how many people, when they first find out about the Virginia Tech is the what? The Hokies. Mm-hmm. And and you always get that that uh, that lovely What the fuck is a Hokie? It's like, do you have to be so crass? It's wild turkey. It's a wild turkey. Yeah. It'll rip your nutsack off if you give it the opportunity. Yeah. Fierce little raptors. And then there's Virginia State, which is uh yeah, nobody. No. Virginia. You showed me on the map where Virginia State hurt. Anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, the problem is I couldn't because I can't even remember where they are. Bro, you caught up on those memes quick. It didn't take you a week. We no, got some fresh. No. I mean, yeah, we got some, fresh we got some new ones, God, but there's man. still some old ones in there. It's just the memes last evergreens. I, I kept I kept popping in. I just couldn't turn the audio on because I was recording and so like literally at the ass end of uh, potluck last night um, like every time I look up like laughing out loud from the memes that was really good memes just do so much more memes I I think of a meme as like a, a type of compression type of file compression that you can literally see because each image, each part of the meme image has all these other things compressed inside of it. Yeah. And it, it's a type of data compression and file compressions where either you get it or you don't. Boomer. <laughs> well, Anyways. <laughs> I see all of that. Absolutely. <laughs> I see another element to memes that kind of make it unique as a, a medium of expression, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause like you figure at this point, like everything is, th- that you could paint has been painted. Everything you can write has been written, right? But the, the, the medium of, of this thing that we call a meme, and I'm still not even quite sure what it is. It's an item of media. We know that. <clears throat> I consider memes to be a type of collage, a type of mosaic. Yeah, okay. Where you take I, I can see that. parts of something else and then but amalgamate. It's, it's one of the few things that we still have left. And music fulfills this role to a certain extent, uh, too. Not corporate music, but, you know, organic music. It's it's still the 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 person that is consuming the the media that is giving it the meaning not the person that's creating it. Because again, it's all about the end user and their experience with that particular piece of media. Because meaning, the meme is an art form. And so you can present your art form, your meme, your idea collage, as it were, your your mosaic of different, ideas that may or may not conflict with one another 
And then when the art is presented to a, a new viewer, they then take that art, that meme, and interpret it through their own reality and their own life experiences. And so that that's another thing about memes, that memes are like song. And you might be singing along with your own special version of lyrics that you made up because can't understand what the fuck okay. Iona is singing. Like what? Yeah, it's it's a different accent here. Yens means y'all. But um. Oh yeah, that's uh that's like a Pennsylvania <laughs> West Virginia thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That Dude, and the check this out. Bowl. Jerry Falwell's father was an entrepreneur and one time bootlegger who was agnostic. His father shot and uh, killed his own brother Garland and died of cirrhosis of the liver in 1948 at the age of 55. <laughs> so, All right, well, Jerry well, Falwell's father was Falwell a hellraiser, man. Wow. Yeah, shot and killed his own brother. That's crazy. Like, That's like, like some Cain and Abel see, shit. Can we get an MTV celebrity, de uh, celebrity death match between Mr. Falwell Sr. with his cirrhotic liver and... <laughs> Devil Bill Rockefeller <laughs> with his wagon full of patent medicines. Oh my God. Where's Judge Mills Lane? Yeah. Let's get it on. That would be a good one. Wow. Oh, I wish they still did those, man. Wow. And, and I bet old man Falwell would shoot down Devil Bill like his punk ass brother Garland. Fuck you, buddy. My moonshine, motherfucker. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I still I look back on the 90s as the time that, that we didn't know the golden age was ending, right? Like, it, was, it wasn't at its apex anymore. It was starting to decline, but you couldn't really tell at that point. Oh, my God. The apex of the 90s is when Bush Sr. stepped out and Slick Willie stepped onto the Arsenio Hall show with his yeah. saxophone. Yeah. And 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 Dustin and just sued all the gently downhill woo, woo, from woo, there. Woo. And he woo 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 wooed it all the way into the White House yeah. off that saxophone performance. Because that made Bubba Clinton the nation's first black the nation's first black president. Yeah. Sorry, Obama. Yeah. Well he was from Arkansas too. So he yeah. had that going for him. And and shout out to Mina, Arkansas, and our good friend Brant Cast, who's not from Mina. He's further up from Mina. But anyway. Is he? Yeah, I'll be talking to him tomorrow night. He's from up there uh uh next to Arkan possibly the single most famous Arkansas in Arkansas in Arkansian? Arca yeah, I think it's okay. That, that's definitely going to be a question for Chris tomorrow. Is it Arkansasian, Arkansian? I'll write that down. Because you know, Kansans, Oklahomans, Kansans, Arkansas, Arkans, Arkansans. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, have, gonna have to ask Chris. What what the fuck is the uh, demon M, the the demon name? What's the demon name for someone from Arkansas? <laughs> or Demonim or whatever it is. Right. All right. Demonim. Yeah, that's right. So, all right. So who is the most famous person from the state of Arkansas? If it's not Bill Clinton. Sam Walton. Ooh, oh, all right. Yeah. Sam Walton. Because up there in Fayetteville is where Sam Walton opened his uh, first uh, hardware store. Hmm. Department store. Walton. Slash concentration camp later known as Walton's Mart, and then just concatenated and shortened to Walmart. Um, yep. And, of course, Fayetteville is home to the Razorbacks, the University of Arkansas, where Arkansians go to school. God damn, that's, that's fucking the shit out of me now. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with Arkansians for now. Yeah, I mean, you can do what you want. Although I know that's wrong. That's we don't. We don't censor anyone's speech here, so you can say Ar what you want. People get offended. They get offended. We're supposed to be adults. You can handle your own feels. 
every single person I've met from the state of Arkansas uses the word gouge excessively. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking that must be some type of Ozarkian idiom. Gouge. Everything is about gouge. Hmm. Oh, don't go there. They gouge you. You'll get gouged there for sure. <laughs> gouge. What the fuck is gouge, man? I don't know. I remember when I was on my way down to Acapulco, I stopped. I stopped in Palestine, Arkansas. I remember that now. Uh, and it was a little, uh, it was like a little taco joint off a of dirt road in Palestine, nice. Arkansas. I don't sounds remember like what it was probably, called. Uh, that sounds so rural. I don't even think they had um, fluoride in their water. Maybe not. Although being Arkansas, I can't say for sure whether or not they had phosphorus in their diet. Because um, hmm. it is Palestine. Right. And of course, you know, probably my favorite word, we're, we're not sure about Arkansian, but I can say for sure that Seth Rich was definitely mugged for his billfold, even though they left his cash and his credit cards in his billfold. Dude. Now that would be called Arkansas. Correct. Arkansas. Correct. Oh, you know, he. He was dancing up and down and so full of joy and then um, shot himself three times in the head with a shotgun. So, you know, in the back of the head. Yeah. In the back of the head. Yeah. Committed suicide with two bullets oh, okay. to the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. Vince Foster. It was the style I'm, at the time, I'm, right? I'm, I'm going to stay on that shout out. I'm not pulling that one back. <laughs> not your back, Vince. We remember. We remember Vince Foster here. Clinton body count. Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out Mark Lord Middleton. Knows, we love the Clintons. You know. We love the Clintons here. Shout out Clinton Global Initiative. <laughs> invest now, invest often. Uh, guaranteed to pay off in uh, cheese pizza and hot dogs. All right. Right. Shout out Cosmic Pizza. Speaking of pedophiles. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Did you know that Joe Biden gave a press conference? Earlier this evening. I was asleep. I know you were asleep. Um, Joe oh Biden might have been asleep as well. It was it was uh, chin nuts. Joe Biden. He was back. Oh, the right. Two little testicles hanging off either side of his chin. Yeah. Now, it was that and, Joe and that's, Biden. That, was that the Joe Biden that doesn't have the earlobes or they just go straight into the... They, they, is that they the wouldn't match? get the shot oh, I didn't close say that out enough. Loud. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't get the shot in close enough for me to get a good look at his earlobe, so I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you remember before we finally found Saddam Hussein down in his spider hole? Spider hole. Spider hole. And then they dragged it was in the script. Yeah, it was a spider hole. Yes, it was in the script. It said spider hole. Spider hole, and they pulled him out of the spider hole, and they, and they had a sham trial and, and hung him and everything. But before that happened, right. just before the whole Saddam... And he we, mysteriously we wasn't shanked in prison in his own fucking country. <laughs> right. right. Even though everybody hated him. Um, from the moment the CIA dropped him in there to overthrow the government in Baghdad in 1982. Uh, so I digress. CNN and others were running all these stories about they're having such a hard time tracking down Saddam Hussein because... Saddam Hussein had like 12 or 15 different body doubles that all dressed and looked like Saddam Hussein. And Saddam Hussein literally had all these fake Saddam Husseins running around Baghdad to throw people off. Um, well, that was do. actually a thing. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I really It's a thing now. Um, you think and, there aren't like Trump body doubles going around the country right now? Well, there's definitely at least five Joe Bidens that I've come to know and love. I've got nicknames for. Yeah, I think at least one of them is computer generated. Yeah, like, I think one of them is Aquaman not an one. actual like corporeal entity. Now, Aquaman Biden has always got the proportions wrong with the head and the hand because. It's the fingers and the hands that are always fucked up. Like you'll notice that. Well, um, that's going Biden away. Has those diagonal We're already starting to figure fingers. that out. 
Why is Aquaman Biden's fingers always diagonal? <laughs> there are there are signs. It, it's it's, yeah. it's what, in our line of work we call it tells. Yeah. There are tells. Yeah, but only only if uh, you know you have the right training and you know what you're looking for. Yeah, it takes a trained eye. That, yep. That's that's very true. And then it's very obvious. And then you and then you'll be just like the Yona and Drizzle, like, oh my God, there's Aquaman fight. Yep. I love the Super Friends. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it was it was all of uh, like I didn't even I didn't watch most of it. I was just looking at it, and it, and and you know, um, Anthony Blinken and Mike Pompeo are actually a uh, part of the Super Friends. They're known as the Wonder Twins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you be a bucket, and I'll be a mop. All right, let's clean up this appropriations bill, anyways. But no, I think it was it was all about like there was a a ruling that came down in some. Uh, court case or whatever uh where they ruled that biden wasn't liable for what was it like uh mishandling classified documents or some shit i don't know it was oh, back yeah. to the fucking documents in his in his garage bullshit right and they yeah, were basically well, what they, they were, were saying the left side of the corvette so we're good yeah. no basically what they were saying was like well you know he's he's an old man so he's he's kind of punchy upstairs sometimes so uh, we're we're not going to hold him liable for it, and basically, and then he's he's getting wheeled out, and he's like, "No, my mind is perfectly okay. I deserve to be president." Fuck you, bomb them! Wow, how yeah. many countries have we bombed since New Year's Day? Uh, uh it's uh, and we're up to eight now because I do eight? count countries in Africa. I am. It, I am counting the lily pad action in Africa. I think we're up to eight because I know that. Are we fucking around in Somalia again? Oh, yeah. And Somaliland. Oh, Shout out Hargaza. It's not just Mogadishu this time. And, and, and we've got some action going on in Eritrea and eastern Ethiopia um, and the Sudan. Um. Oh, well, and I mean, Ethiopia is just uh, Mali open for business. And Nigeria, because you know, although those countries got France to get the fuck out, we never left. Anyways, I don't know. I don't know. States. It it kind of seemed like some of those countries in the Sahel weren't actually like too hip to what Vicky Newland was offering. Like they were like, oh, no, uh, it, it, yeah, it I terrible. think we can take care of it on our own. Thanks. Like, get the fuck out. When um, Anthony Blinken went to uh, Nigeria, they told him to get no. Was it Ni yeah. Niger? Yeah, not Nigeria. Yeah, they were Niger. like, just don't even get off the plane. Yeah, Niger literally told him to go fuck himself. They they literally said fuck you. Yeah, because it's it, literally again, their it's the third generation. Like, all of these assholes are just spoiled rich fucks who've never had to work for anything in their lives. They've never had to build anything, yeah. right? They had, like, everything you could ever want from the moment they were born. They've never known anything different in their life. And they just expect everything to be handed to them, whether it's illegal or immoral or whatever. That's just people causing problems, man. I've only been to the wolf trap a couple of times, but every time I went to the wolf trap, I got to meet those people and their families. Um, At wolf for the uninitiated, uh, wolf trap is a beautiful outdoor amphitheater in the bucolic countryside of Nova. Again, for the uninitiated, that's Northern Virginia. Um, so, you know, we're, we're talking right up there by Loudoun County. Um, shout out Leesburg and Reston and Ugh. Okay. Just get on that Dulles hallway. There you go. Rusting, or or Sterling. drive the frontage roads, you broke ass bastard. Yeah, Sterling's a, a big locale up in that area now. Like mm -hmm. Reston and Sterling have just kind of basically merged. It's just it's just one big blob of delicious suburbia. One giant slab of yeah, asphalt, I mean. man. 
<laughs> and there's plenty of parking. Plenty of parking. Parking lot after it's parking. not near where you're going. Unless you're going to Dulles Airport, you know, because oh, uh, yeah. then they got they got all kinds of parking. I mean, why didn't you just pay the extra money and fly out of Reagan, broke ass? Ah, 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 stay on that frontage road, fucker. You can't afford those tolls. Stay on that frontage road all the way to Leesburg, fucker. Don't worry, don't turn to Route Seven pretty soon, and you'll get past those damn toll booths, the boothless toll road with the fucking. <laughs> Told what is it? Told tag reader and fucking license plate pictures. And, uh, and God, what what do they call them? Like uh, flyovers and all sorts of. Oh, that's the best part shit. about crossing the state line into Virginia. How do you know you've entered Virginia? Oh, you're going down the interstate and you see that sign, radar checked by airplane. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna it's got say the it's... hash marks on the on the road where they're fucking, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're, I think they've you're got driving down, do uh, that too. you're driving down a country road at a good clip, about you know, 45, 50, something like that. Just nice, easy, uh, chill drive. You come to a roundabout. That's how you know you're in Virginia. Yeah. No, no rhyme, no roundabout. reason, no nothing. Just we had money and we had to fucking spend it. So roundabout. Like, oh my God, it's like 25 miles to Suffolk. We're literally in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's three miles to get back to Route 58, but here we are. Roundabout. <laughs> roundabout, located four feet above sea level Whee! in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> what is this, Henry Co? Why does Henry Co have a fucking roundabout? What is going on? Anyways, shout out Fort Lee. Yeah. I, I don't even know if it's... Uh, I think it was closed. I don't think there's a Fort Lee. Fort Lee? I think it was. Because, again, it was named after Robert E. Lee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and he he's a baddie now. Because he those, was those are all also baddies. a son of Virginia. Okay. So the history books say. And, you know, Robert E. Lee, poor fella, he was the only sober guy at the Appomattox Courthouse. It took two gay lovers on both sides of Ulysses S. Grant just to keep him in his chair because mm. apparently Ulysses S. Grant was even more of a drunk than Jerry Falwell's granddad. Anyway. Wow. You know, I might actually be related to Robert E. Lee because my awesome. uh, grandfather on my mother's side was a Lee. Also born in Virginia. Yeah. Robert E. Lee actually led the charge at Chapultepec hmm. against the Niños Héroes, the, the, the hero boys of Chapultepec, Mexico, from the military academy on top of that mountain peak in downtown Mexico City. We're talking like wow. 12, 13, 14 years old. And uh, this, the, the story goes, apparently... That story of the hero boys buried for years, literally. And I'm thinking it was around the 1940s when the, the bones were exhumed of these boys that died. Um, and Somehow the American embassy in Mexico City had something to do with this story of trying to suppress the story and stop the dig and everything. Hmm. Um, and it became such a point of contention between the American embassy and Mexico that, well, ever since that happened, it's a major national celebration every year of the of the hero boys of the president of Mexico every year has an obligatory commemoration ceremony where the Mexican armed forces and the president of Mexico line by line read off the first and last name of every one of the Nino boys and they basically have a uh, a, a military funeral with honors every single year reopening the wound of Chapultepec celebrate the bloodshed uh, for Mexico, uh, and Damn it was it, a that Mexican ain't going to create some nostalgia. 
Yeah, uh, there's that. And the other nostalgia that's celebrated is the Irish cannoneers who fought to defend Mexico City, known as the San Patricios, or the St. Patrick Brigade. Los San Patricios. The red-bearded Irishmen and their cannons that um, fought to defend Mexico on that day with those hero boys of Chapultepec. And uh, they all lost. Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant came into town fighting side by side under the command of uh, General Scott. <laughs> um, the same General Scott, that uh, old fuss and feathers, the same General Scott that led us Cherokee to Oklahoma on the Trail of Tears mm. and led his um, uh, he junior sounds officers. Like awesome guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's when Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant marched from uh, Veracruz through Pueblo to Mexico City and kicked serious ass. And Damn. as a result, we ended up with uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, California, and Oregon. That's right. Bonus! Shout out to uh, James and Cassie uh, out there in El Rito, New Mexico. Uh, without my ancestor... Y'all would be fucking Mexican right now. That's right. You can thank Robert E. Lee, um, all of the American Southwest. That's, That's right. right. You're welcome. That's right. I I will accept your uh, gratitude at manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. Thank you. Now, I was almost going to say that, that uh, coffee cup Kind of looks like a red solo cup there, Toby Keith. Keith. <laughs> it kind of does. If ever there it? wasn't a musician yeah. alive that That's we could say, why I bought it. I was like, oh, this is going to fuck with people. You know, no and offense it, to Lee Greenwood, but that guy's just a one hit wonder VH1. Toby Keith was the real deal when it comes to a patriotic country singer. And um, when you go to remember Toby Keith, make sure to look at a picture that was at least five years old. Otherwise, well, if you're a He-Man fan, he look kind of looked like Skeletor there at the end. I mean, age three is coming to answer. It really does something to your anyways. No. Wow. I don't know. You know, they say we all, nothing we like all a get good what old we Toby Keith red, end, white, so. blue, you know, gung ho murka anthem to, to fire you up and get you to guzzle down some Bud Lights, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, he was good for that. Absolutely. So was Spuds McKenzie a dog or a bitch? See, the, after that whole Dylan Mulvaney I thing, I have both. to go back and rethink all of my Bud Light mascots. Were those three Budweiser frogs, gay frogs, Alex Jones? You know, now right. I can finally go back through history and, and really take a closer look at these advertising mascots. Mm. The, you know, the, the Taco Bell Chihuahua, Definitely a pansexual dog. Just look at it. I, I can imagine the, the Taco Bell Chihuahua and a huge orgy with like three or four chupacabras. Yeah, definitely. But what about like the sexually ambiguous ones? Like the, the Domino's Pizza Noid. It's like, it's like asexual. Mm. You don't know if it's male or female. Yeah, see, I, that, I never could do Domino's. And you've never seen more than, than one of them at a time. So, like, maybe it's like some weird demon and creature you know what? or something. The Noid know. actually came from a game show. Because the Noid is the same exact same thing on uh, No Whammies, No Whammies, No Whammies, No Whammies, No Whammies, No Whammies. Oh, there's the that? Noid. Gotcha, bitch. Hmm. Is that Joker's Wild? I don't remember. Oh, I'm blanking on my fucking Don't game remember. shows. Man, I cut the cable TV so long ago. But that I, I always love game shows. Like, shout out Alex Trebek and Jeopardy. Oh, my God. And, of course, the best form of Jeopardy of all was with Norm MacDonald. Whenever he was mm. his alter ego, Burt Reynolds, <laughs> a.k.a. Tur Ferguson, Ferguson. <laughs> with Will Ferrell playing Alex Trebek on Celebrity Jeopardy. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll take let it smell, Alex. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Connery, it's let it smell. 
That's not what your mother said, Trebek. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, my God. And Norm MacDonald, man. Mm. Poor guy died of cancer slowly for nine years. Yeah, and nobody Never knew. let a soul know. Yeah. Never let anybody. Never let on. That's crazy. He just kept it all under the hat. And he was still doing one day pretty was good gone. work in that nine years, too. Yeah. He never let it on. He never he never paid for sympathy. He never competed in the oppression Olympics. He just kept no. it all under the... All no, under he just stuff. kept making fun of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Now rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Fun Absolutely. I, I liked him on the uh, Weekend Update way better than Dennis Miller. Oh yeah, without question. Way better. No, Norm. Norm was uh, a rare talent that, as far as comedy goes, was excellent in every single performance that he gave. I mean, when he was anchoring the Weekend Update, how did he open the show? Hi, everybody. This is the fake news. Yeah. Just balls out, balls out, yeah. and he, he, he was. To me, Norm was one of the few uh, comedians on the same level as like Bill Hicks or, mm. you know, Harlan. You know, anyways. <clears throat> you know, fucks. Yeah, even... It's like that one guy saying, you know, if, if at least half the crowd is not horrified at what you're saying while the other half the crowd is laughing, then you're not doing it right. Right. Man, I you know I think my next remix I'm gonna have to get into the Bill Hick. It's time. Yeah. Oh it's time. yeah. It's past time. You should have been into Bill Hicks a while back. That's well, like Grand Theft you know, staple. I, I just I just hadn't found the right music, and I had to get through my disco phase and get <laughs> beyond the disco phase to get into Bill Hicks, and I'm finally there. It, it took Hank Williams Senior and Hank Williams Junior to fully get me out of my disco phase. And mm. so you'll be happy to know depths of tyrants. No more Bee Gees for me for at least a few days. Well, yeah, it's good to take a break every now and then. I'm still, I still keep thinking about that Ace of Base remake. I saw the sign. Anyways, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, that would really mix well with some Teletubbies. Ace of Base Teletubby. Well, Anyways, you back have to you, all Drew. that. That's you can have that all to yourself. Yeah, it's um, all good. Yeah, you know, I was really happy with the Klingon remix of the KLF with Jamie Wynette, though. That, I think that came out pretty well. LD seemed pleased with it. You yeah. know, good. I, I I made a good wholesome dairy farm video for that song. Um, just fried and ancient and uh no cows were harmed during the making of that video ld just so you know, <laughs> you know ld kept messaging me yona just please protect the cows yeah don't let them hurt the cow ld cares he does like, like a true like a true husband to the animals you can hurt me don't hurt my animals yeah don't hurt me that's love folks that's true. Well, love. You know, we lost Toby Keith, Yona. Do you know who else we lost from the, the music world? Carl Weathers. Did he play music too? Or did no, he, he was just an actor. He was just oh. a, a good looking black dude. I mean, and he, he may, maybe he teeth. played music. I don't know. I, I probably shouldn't be so quick to, uh, to judge him. Perhaps he oh, did. Beautiful Perhaps he oh, was a rock on tour. I don't know. Uh, but that is not what he was known for. He was he was known for uh, acting in movies and taking his shirt off. So, yeah, is what I'll it is. Send folks. You, uh, I'll send you the YouTube clip of Carl Weathers doing his 1960s as with uh, I'll... Oh yeah. Anyways, well, we lost Wayne Kramer. Oh wow! Yeah, famous founding member of the Motor City Five. Wow, man. And I believe it was to cancer. Yep, another one falls to cancer. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So that happened. And then also I learned this morning, uh, cause Thursday is always the uh, most terrifying broadcast of the week on media monarchy for folks who don't turn in, uh, tune in regularly. So happy it's Thursday. Shit. It ain't Friday. S H I T. Yeah. So happy it's Thursday. Mojo Nixon has, uh, shuffled off this mortal coil also died of cancer. Fuck man. Yeah. Was it just regular cancer or, or was it the new and improved turbo cancer? I th- there, there seemed to be indications that it was the new and improved, uh, turbo cancer that tastes yeah. more like cancer classic. Yeah, because normally when you find out they have cancer, it's like a Toby Keith type cancer where, you know, you get to watch them emaciate for three years as right. they do the, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, well, there's a radiation seed therapy, but no, the other one, um, kill more therapy. No, chemotherapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is kill more therapy. Yeah. Well, it's, it's chemical therapy. It's, they're shooting chemicals into your body, okay. which aren't supposed yeah. to be in there. And that's going to kill off the the cancer and all the the good stuff in your body too. It kills that off too. It just kind of yeah. kills your body. Because I mean, who's kidding? Who don't try to? Interferons. They try it's to get it around the cancer so that hopefully it does kill some of the cancer. Because the chemotherapy it's kills not a perfect your interferons. Science, it, you know. it destroys your immune system, and and after all, your interferons yeah. are interfering. Get out of the way. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, there were there were <laughs> indications that uh that Mojo had uh, gotten together as as part of some like uh uh cruise ship uh tour type thing, like a country music uh figures of country music like take a cruise with them and get drunk with them and party with them and shit. Oh, and best apparently cruise ever. Yeah, More gays, please. Apparently you had to uh, you had to have gotten the gene therapy or they wouldn't let you get on the boat. They'd be like, no, fuck you, get out of here. You, oh. you dirty, dirty, uh, original recipe human. So it turns out there are these, what's it called? T4 helper cells that are in part of the immune system or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they I help it. Thus and the they name. help. Yeah, yeah, T4 health. Yeah, that yeah, that is what they're called. So <laughs> there there are certain T4 health helper cells that specifically dysregulate cancers. Mm-hmm. So that their their one and only job is to go and kill cancers because yep. apparently there are precancerous cells all over the body and their job is to go find them and terminate them. Yeah. Um and turns out the very first thing that the lipid, is it lipid or lipid? Well, LNP, lipid nanopart. Yeah. Um, and the LNP, which is developed the, by the Dr. Vehicle. Robert Malone, patent pending. Yeah, that's right. Um, old Spooks Malone. So you got this LNP delivery vehicle, which is basically the rickshaw that's, you know, that's pulled by a pair of flip flops. Uh, right up to every cell and the first thing that it targets every single time is the t4 or is it t8 t4 helper oh, cell it's the t4 yeah uh go straight for that fucker that dysregulate your yeah. cancer your precancerous yeah. cells and so one of the first side effects of your um gene editing regimen is the uh evisceration of your immune system and back to you drizzle yeah. are, are we on youtube no no probably not i mean not probably not anymore <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'll put the replay up they don't <laughs> i don't know what it is man they don't uh they don't really pay much attention to that channel i guess it's because it doesn't get a whole lot of traffic you know like it's not uh high visibility so we can still get Speaking away with YouTube, talking about i got reinstated did you really? They reinstated smoke more of the weeds. Really? See, Aww. that just goes to show you it pays as a content creator to just stop creating and stop uploading. Huh. Hey. Wow. Because when you're demonetized, well, it's not going to make money anyways. Uh, but true. at least you're not deplatformed now. 
So fuck up, don't post anything and behave in chat and we'll let you use it for a while. <laughs> for until we say otherwise. <laughs> Who knows what that'll be? Yeah. Um But I've decided I am gonna upload a video to that thing. I'm gonna upload a brand new version of Phosphorus Eyes because there you go. last Sunday at the end of the main show. Grand Theft World episode 169. Dude. Um, they played, uh, they being LD and uh, Richard and uh, Tony and Josh and everybody else. Um, they played the original version of Discouraged, aka Phosphorus Eyes, that I wrote and recorded last June. And I sent it over to. Oh, uh, they're uh, pouring it in on my territory, huh? Dead fella. I'm glad yeah. you told me that. I have to have a well, word with them Well, because dead fella had told me earlier that Sunday that he had sent off the June version of from last year of Phosphorus Eyes, the, the Palestine song, uh, to Sean, the producer at Media Monarchy. And I was like, well, awesome. And so then I started talking it up in the chat during Grand Theft World main show, they're like, oh my God, the Palestine song is going on Media Monarchy. And so at the very conclusion of the main show, after the obligatory Sears comedy bit, JP Sears, um, he's funny. Anyways, after the JP Sears thing um, <laughs> and the other comedy spot where the guy's like playing the New York police spokesman talking about how they did away with all the drugs on the juice. And then it did my phosphorus size thing. So literally, then I wake up the next morning, Monday. Well, who's kidding who I never went to sleep because you know the show ends and then AM wake up on in like two hours. So, anyways, right. uh, I take my nap and I wake up at about three o'clock Monday afternoon. All these messages from Dead Fella, and he's like, Bro, we should totally redo that song. We should totally remix it. Because when I was working on that song back in June, that was about two or three weeks after I'd started working with Dev Fellow for the first time. And we were making all these new songs. Um, and Because he's always making his own music. And I'm always making my own music. But when we collaborated... We were collaborating on new songs from from the first rip. And so Phosphorus Eyes was the first time that I ever took a song to him where I had already finished it. I'd already done my own mastering and I kind of bungled my vocals on the mastering and it was sloppy. And so I gave it over to him because I said, man, I think this is a good song but I'd like your help with it. And so I sent it to him in June and he worked on it a little bit. And then he sent it back to me. I was like, so, so what do you think about this? He's like, eh, it's a good song. Uh, and so we start putting together the capitalist the album. I'm like we're, we're going to put phosphorus eyes on here. I was like, ah, he's like, well, you know, I'd like to see this first album do pretty well. And, you know, that's, that's going to piss off a lot of people. Like, yeah, yeah. Israel is kind of a third rail. So it was just kind of mm -hmm. thrown to the side and just left to the side. I've, I've never put it out on an album. Um, I mean, I, I put it up on the band camp there and it just kind of sat there. And then, I, you know, uh, for reasons unbeknownst to me, Dead Fella decided to take that song and give it to Sean. So back to Monday afternoon, I wake up, I got all these messages this past Monday. Bro, we got to re-record this song. Let's see if we can't re-record it and get a new version to Sean before it before airs it this on week. Air. Oh, shit. Uh, and I'm like, well, buddy, uh, you know, I've got a gig planned for tonight. I'm going to be playing live on stage in Charleston. Um, and I'm not the opening act. And they're going to have food in the green room. And it's going to be awesome. But, and I, you know, I, 
I got the box out and everything. I was just about to box my keyboard because I got to drive to Charleston, West Virginia. Not to be confused with Charleston, South Carolina, Stephen Colbert. You still disappoint me, Stephen Colbert, and it's over. Right. Well, we got Fuckers. Jamie Deluxe in South Carolina, so it, it helps balance that the force. That doesn't make it up. It, you know, big shout out to Myrtle Beach. Never going to take that shout out back. So I, I sit down and I record the piano part. And by the time I get to the end of the piano part, I'm just crying all over. I'm literally fucking dripping tears on the fucking piano to where I, the last two measures I could totally, and I can hear I'm like out of sync with the metronome and I'm just sobbing and I get done. I send it off to him, pack my shit and go to Charles. <laughs> well, when, when the, when the girl with the headset pokes her head in the green room and says, Hi, Yona. You're on in five minutes. Finally. Ding, 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 ding. I look down on my phone. Bro, what are you doing? Can you record the vocals right now? Uh, I'm going on stage in three minutes. No, but I'll be home in a few hours and I can do it then. So I play the show, get done. Go to drive back home. I'm falling asleep on I-64, so I have to ditch at the rest area and nap for about three hours. Finally make it home at like about 7.45 Tuesday morning. I, I, I log on to Discord so I can listen to Media Monarchy over my phone um, while I'm working. And so I, I, I get everything into the doll, get my mic plugged in i'm about to record the vocals for the song and we're all the way to the end of morning monarchy on tuesday february the 6th i've got my lyrics out i'm about ready to record and he's all the way to the end of the show where where uh, he being james at lotto because at the end of his shows he'll like you know on media monarchy 10 years ago and then on media mark five years ago all the way down uh He's talking about, and then he's talking about Gaza and everything. I'm like, oh no, look, he's playing it today. And then, then he plays the song. And then I record the vocals to the new version that they're going to play that played the song. So, okay. um, so anyways, I, I got done. I sent it off to him. He mastered it. Then I made an awesome music video. And Death the Tyrant sent me this watermark remover because he's like, Jonah, man. Your videos are good enough now that I have to send you this watermark remover because the watermark is really taken away from the video. Oh, wow. That's that's high praise. Which is a, the highest compliment yeah. I could possibly receive from a fellow video artist like the great Death to Tyrants is. Um, man, he makes some slut fucking videos. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, he does. And he's like, bro... Bro, you gotta you gotta ditch the fucking watermarks. It's really tacky. Really taken away. Medium. Yeah, I Last mean, two it, videos. It does. No more watermark. I don't know. No more watermark. I mean, good. You know, to me, it's only tacky when I've got the bead in one corner, a clidio in another, and then a clip champ. You know, when, it, when it's in three corners of the thing, then it's tacky. Yeah. Then it's. Tacky. Oh, is clip Just champ? One. Just, Are they so, doing watermarks now? I, I don't know if it was Clip Champ. I, I actually I should be using Clip Champ because they got me for ten dollars off my bank account and I only used it once. And the version of Pig the Parrot that it made I didn't even like and never even published anyways. Hmm. Kind of a wasted ten dollars. Pig to Parrot would be the video magazine, I guess I would call it. I call it a movie. It's Pig to Parrot is the capital aristocracy movie. That's the, the debut Red, Red Fella album. But think like Pink Floyd the Wall, where I took all the songs from the album and I had to rearrange the song order so that I could make this movie so that each and every music video 
was a part of a movie so that one goes into the next, goes into the next, and it tells the story and it all makes sense. Um, and, you know, Death to Tyrants was supposed to make the music videos for one of those songs with the uh, Holy Prophet cartoon, Holy Prophet. I never got that from him. Hmm. Never got that from him. That was going to be for my song, Charlie Hebdo. So I had to cut that from the album. And uh, still waiting on that uh, video with cartoon Holy Prophet Muhammad there, uh, Death to Tyrants. Well, Any day hopefully now. Hopefully he's watching right now. Any day now. Yeah. Still waiting on that Muslim cartoon video, Death to Tyrants. Otherwise, chop, chop, it's, buddy. it's just falling on deaf ears. So hopefully he's watching. Yeah, otherwise, I'll just make my own music video. Charlie Hebdo then. Yeah, so I mean, busy. you know how to do it. So you can do it. It's not that big a deal. I, I've not really worked with cartoons that much, though. I normally just copy and paste other cartoons. But I've looked all over the internet, and I cannot find any animated Prophet Muhammad cartoons anywhere. <laughs> I think that's by design. So, look, look, there has to be a first. And it's going to be Death to Tyrants. All right. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if he can uh, he can get it out. Speaking... And he gets very uncomfortable every time I ask him about this. You know, he's like, Yona, are you still talking about that? I'm, it's, I'm really busy. <laughs> It sounds like he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. There, I mean, there's a definite he's, reluctance. Maybe he's there. not. I have man. enough respect for the largest religion practiced on planet Earth to give them what they want. And that's more cartoon yeah. video. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe he's not the one you're looking for. Right? That is not the mm. droid you're looking for. You need to keep looking. Yeah. There are other video creators out there, but. I guarantee I you somebody would get get, get in touch with uh, Owen Benjamin's people. There's got to be one crazy motherfucker in that group yeah. that'll do it. Yeah, and he'd I mean, probably do it too because, you know. Commercials for niggles on Twitter. Charlie Edge Shit was hilarious. is a piano song. Owen Benjamin is a piano singer. Yeah, see, Biscotti says Sugar will do it. Get Sugar to do yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, Sugar's fucking. I knew I could count on Sugar Psycho. Cute. I knew I could count on Sugar Cube. Fuck yeah, man. Oh, that means I got to put a rhinoceros pooping in that video, too. I mean, as you do. Yeah, sure. Why not? Just put two in there or a handful. Just get a handful for good measure. So speaking of cartoons, Yona, uh, we live in a cartoon. Did you know that? A cartoon clown world. That's or right. clowns, please. That's right. Hashtag Uga intensifies. It, uh, Uga. Yeah. It, anyway, it didn't just start four years ago. Like it's been the whole time, <clears throat> all the way back to Lincoln, right? Yeah. I mean, it's time. We got to get into it, man. We're we're but running up Abraham against it. Lincoln. You know, um, this is what the people came for. I mentioned previously that. There's a strong possibility, as in this is probably what happened. Um, Isaac Gallagher, Abraham Lincoln's boyhood friend and possible first gay lover. Um, Lincoln drowned him in the creek. And there's a historical marker sign by the creek where Gallagher died, right there by the Lincoln boyhood home on U.S. Route 31E, LaRue County, just two miles south of the DJ Hyona birthplace home place solar house because my family built the first fully solar house in the commonwealth of kentucky beginning in 1976 with photovoltaics and all that stuff that's right folks and water heating out um that was passive and active solar fine house um because you know both my parents were super geeks and it kind of led me to being a, a a super geek as richard liked to call me um, but you know Mom got her master's from Rice and dad got his master's from Stanford and Damn. was a master's in science and electrical engineering from Stanford class of 1971. And uh, when I was in second or third grade, 
he told me the for the first time about the Stanford Milgram experiment. Hmm. Um, and so I, you know, that's why I'm so weird and fucked up. My dad started telling me stories about all the weird shit going on in Cupertino, California, <laughs> Palo Alto at the campus of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Yeah. Shout out um, SRI, not to be confused <laughs> with SSRI, although they are yeah. similar. There, there well, are know, SRI has done a lot of work with SSRI. Correct. Um, and if you need more inhibitions on your reuptake, just holler at the Cardinals. Um, used to be the Indians, but luckily they don't have anybody running around in a headdress anymore. Um, and uh, he also got this publication of Stanford alumni, uh, the Stanford Quarterly. Interesting enough, it came four times a year. Um, and uh, that dank fucking article. Oh, man, Dad's bookshelves. Gosh. Boy, I, I got way off. I went way off. Back there. <laughs> well, we were talking about uh, Lincoln being gay and killing his uh, childhood lover. Yeah, so he killed Isaac Gallagher there in the creek, and then they move and leave the state. We're definitely He's... not on YouTube anymore now. And they sell everything in Bardstown on the steps of the Talbot Tavern and flee to Indiana. And so Thomas takes is working three different jobs you know, as a as a log sawyer, you know, cutting up logs, a logger basically, a chain sawyer. Um, a, you know, they're called sawyers, right? You know, mm -hmm. run the saw. Um, and it's where the name came so from. So Lincoln's I mother had to, you know, basically be head of household. At which point, Lincoln's mother mysteriously dies at home with Abraham, and it's attributed to the milk. That she died of the milk fever. Um, I wasn't aware there was which such a thing. point Lincoln then I've been drinking milk out. my entire life, and this is the first time I've heard of milk fever. Yeah, got milk fever. Show your mustache. Um, and hopefully, it's mixed in with some herpes. Yes, that's milk fever. Um, and so at that point, Lincoln flees the house, moves to Illinois. So. You know, before there was a Clinton body pile. Yeah, there was a Lincoln there body was a pile. Lincoln body pile. Although yeah. the Lincoln body pile is a little bit weird because let's say we've got um, boyhood playmate, um, killed your mom, then he kills a mm, business mommy dearest, partner, yeah. then he kills uh, two ex lovers, um, allegedly. Allegedly. I, Apparently, the only thing that stopped Abraham Lincoln's killing spree and um, gay orgies was uh, John Wilkes Booth. So, Wow. Well, I know uh, him and his wife, uh, Mary Todd, by the time they, they got to being the president and the first lady, like they weren't actually really a couple anymore. Well, they didn't sleep in the same bed. Right. She slept with other men, and he slept with other men. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so it was, it was mutual <laughs> agreement. Yeah. Did they have children? Yes, uh, and poor child died. Sudden oh, wow. infant death syndrome before the vaccines means um, your dad suffocated you in your sleep. So not wow. only did Lincoln kill Must his have been a noisy friend little fucker. and his mother, some have alleged that Lincoln even killed his own infant son. Wow. Lincoln was a killer. Oh, and best part of all, we, we do save the best for last here at manufacturedreality.org, Grand Theft World, Liberty Radio with Major High Yona and the Master of Ceremonies himself, Colonel Drizzle. <laughs> That's full bird, Colonel, not Lieutenant Colonel. Know your rank. That, that that's so. No, no, I'm I'm keeping the lieutenant. That's right. Yeah. <sighs> Stephen Douglas was running for the nomination of the Republican ticket against 
Abraham Lincoln, which led to the infamous debates held in the state of Illinois, the Lincoln-Douglas debates. And that's where you get to hear Abraham Lincoln speak at great length about how we need to keep the inferior races separate from the human races. And he refers to the subhuman races, you know, the, the Negroid people. Um, and, you know, because Lincoln is, is elevated and beatified into sainthood by historians as the great emancipator, slave, right. and, you know, the greatest friend to the African American. And, uh, right. You should probably read a few of the actual things that Abraham Lincoln said about your um, subhuman Negroid heritage there during the furious and fierce Lincoln-Douglas debate. Fiona, uh, most civil war <laughs> was fought over slavery, right? That's what right. Nikki Haley and, said. And that's why at the end of the Civil War, Lincoln signed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution to keep slavery legal. <laughs> slavery is hereby prohibited in the United States. Mm. Unless, unless, yeah. It's for a crime. It's for a punishment for a crime that uh, we just made up. Okay, back to work, slave. Yep. We're taking you off the plantation. We're putting you in some black and white stripes. We're gonna put and we're gonna move the chains from mm -hmm. your neck down to your ankles. Well, now back to the yeah. same. Now you're going back to the same fucking plantation. You're gonna hold the same fucking row. You're gonna pick the same fucking cotton. Yep. Just that now you actually have an inmate number. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, America. You're welcome. Back to work, slave. Yeah. You know, apparently uh, Ice Cube is making the podcast rounds, uh, spilling the beans on the hip hop music industry uh, and the whole uh, the whole gangster rap um, push in the 90s. Oh, the whole right? East Coast, West Coast. Thing yeah, the East Coast, West Coast beef, beef, all of that, buckery. all of that shit, yeah. all that shit, all of it. Even up to, I would imagine, present day with like drill rap, right? Yeah. I, and he's talking about how the people that have the financial interests in the record companies are the exact same people who have the financial interest in the private prison system in the United States. And they were the ones who decided uh, the course that hip hop was going to take as it came to prominence. And what did that do? What was the effect that that had? It funneled <laughs> young men from, you know, uh, the inner cities and even some out into the suburbs right into the private prison system. Well, you know, you can't have a super predator 1994 crime bill without Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg's The Chronic album in 1992. You know, you put on the socks before you put on the shoes. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's how it goes. Or, or in the case of a Patriot Front type um, social activist, you put on the socks before you put on the Crocs and the khaki shorts. Yeah. So you can show off your glow on the dark, skinny legs, even though the upper body is getting worked out. That's what happens when you're a part-time surfer and a full-time cop. Anyways. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, I don't know what I, what I was Shout out to signature to. reduction force. Yeah, Anyways. No doubt. God damn. What I was listening to <laughs> struck me as being like really disingenuous. Right. Cause he's sitting here like talking about all this stuff and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, motherfucker, you're famous because of this, right? Like you wouldn't exist without this business model and you took advantage of it. 
You knew it was going on while it was going on. Why, why are you only talking about it now? Well, to be fair, I really like the way uh, Ice Cube responded to Cat Williams' his cognac confession, we'll call it. <laughs> the song was to her. <laughs> that grabbed everybody's attention, Cat didn't it? When, 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 that's one of the videos I did go watch, and I've watched more than once, uh, just to, to study his, uh, you know, body language and his facial expressions. Um, because, I, you know, that video is the only video where I've heard Ice Cube speak at the glacial Norman Finkelstein pace. Huh. When he's trying to explain away the, because, you know, what I'm talking about, you know, Cat Williams gave this infamous interview. Uh, that's something you definitely should watch uh, uh, with uh, Stewart uh, from ESPN. LeBron James's greatest fan. Um, I think that's his name. And uh, and he's drinking the cognac and he's just ripping and, you know, just taking one down after another. And as soon as Cat Williams got done with that, over the next three days, you know, of course, Cedric, the entertainer, had to respond, Mr. No Talent. And all these other people start chiming in with their response videos, you know. And, of course, finally, we get the response video from Mr. Hollywood himself, Ice Cube, who's made all these movies, you know, worked in all these studios. And, oh, he knows everything Cat Williams is saying is true. But he's still making money off Hollywood. So, yeah. you know. I really want to just sit there and piss on the foot and bite the hand that that's feeding and you know watering his garden. So to hear him just uh, 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 well, you know, I'm not really saying what he's saying was entirely wrong, but you know, it's kind of things and they're gobbledygook. You know, really, it's a, it's like a chopped and screwed remix of some word salad. Ice Cube. His cat Williams fucking nailed it, dude. Yeah. That's As he often does. Fucking nailed it. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I made a remix of Ice Cube and he liked it. That's the highlight of my music career thus far. Damn, Yona, that bum. Uh, <laughs> still fucks me. Still fucks me up. That was awesome. Dude, they're just people like you and me. Like they're literally no different. The only difference is they have more exposure. That's it. And maybe they toss and turn a little bit more in their sleep at night. If the conscience maybe I don't know. I don't know how. I've they got sleep my dignity. Night. I've got my dignity. I don't yeah. have to worry about that. I sleep like a fucking baby. Most nights, just yeah. all logs. No guilt here. So, all right, you know, we think, I, I, we, think uh, we can pretty much finger, finger Lincoln uh, as a gay serial killer at this point, right? And a pedophile. Loved, the, you know, yeah. he, he was a founding member of the North American Man Boy Love Association. Wait, do we have a receipt for that? Oh, uh, let's see. Dude, if we could get that out, like that could be an exclusive. That could put us on the map. I was thinking that one of the reasons why John Wilkes Booth killed Lincoln was because of the homosexuality. Well, I mean, that's as so, good a so reason actually, as any, isn't it? Actually, the assassination of Lincoln by Booth was a hate crime against the gay. Think about it. They weren't supposed to be gay back then. Well, like there you know, were places where it was actually illegal, like you could right. get locked well, up and sentenced. I mean, I would say that Lincoln was a pansexual, but he didn't really like women. Hmm. So maybe polyamorous. Who knows, man? 
Like, oh, so wait, I think, wait. I know I what term. This whole, I, like, power. There is a Virginia male. term for Lincoln, and the Virginia term would be minor attracted person. That term was made up by a faculty member yeah. at a university in Virginia. Yeah. Who. University Amazingly of got Virginia, fired. I believe, as a matter of fact. Yes, yes, that yeah. came from the, the most prestigious like uh, higher institution of learning in the Commonwealth, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. I've been that there several from, times. Uh, I've seen no evidence of that claim. Charlottesville, aka Tiki Torch Town, <laughs> pretty much, which is a great place for uh, Democratic volunteers to go. Uh, Cosplay as Glenn Youngkin supporters, right? <laughs> remember Dude, that, that video? State is so funny. Remember up. that? That, that that's, that's yeah, stained in my that. head like like a, a mattress in a Jewish tunnel, you know. Yeah. Uh, those poor kids. <sighs> hey mom, I gotta go to Charlottesville this weekend. Why? Oh, we're all gonna dress up as fake Trump supporters. It's gonna be great. Did you make any more of those Again, no bake oatmeal cookies? I, I wanted to take those through these to people's Charles heads. Hill. Like the 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 Patriot Front, right? The 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 extremists. I'm sorry, let me do the quotations. <laughs> extremists. The Patriot Turbo Front. Extremists. The the matching khaki <laughs> boys. <laughs> like what what is literally going through their head? Do they do they think that they're fooling people? Do they think people are actually buying into their little dog and pony show? I know the next time I'm feeling patriotic, I'm getting a high and tight haircut again. Yeah. I'm gonna work on my surfing tank. Get those sport glasses. Yeah. Wow. I just don't <laughs> Do the people in America know that, like, Europe is on the edge of full-scale revolt because of the farmer situation? Oh, like you've oh got, my God. You've got Paris has already fallen, right? I mean, which is obvious, right? The French, they would be the first to bow out. Did but, you see La Tour de Pay? The, the, I saw a picture uh, that's got in the center of it the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And on both sides of the street, yeah, there's bales of hay, literally. Yeah, that's our thumbnail. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, well, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and now Gee, uh, really Brussels. Up the feed. Brussels yeah, and has Brussels, apparently been and, surrounded. And, and it began in the Netherlands. Same thing in Germany. Yeah. Same thing in Austria. Poland is about to join uh, in with the uh, the resistance there. Like. You know, I'm we're, like, we're literally like uh, almost like it, there's going to be a, a dissolution of the European Union. I think, maybe I, I don't know. That's what I'd like to see happen. I can almost taste the World War Three war profits. Oh man, oh man! I need to go down to Walmart and buy all the toilet paper. Time yeah, to hoard it, it. Who's covering it? Nobody's talking about it. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody talking about the uh, farmer protest. And again, it was I I I finger Mark Ruta in the Netherlands for getting all this shit Shame started on you. because they they took <laughs> the lead on behalf of uh, Mark Ruta's good buddy uh, Klaus Schwab. Yeah, to make the Netherlands um, the you know. The, basically the, the test run, the beta run for getting rid of farmers and land grab. Because, you know, as a land surveyor, it's, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. It's a fucking land grab. Well, you, you look duh. at the people that were burned out of California, like Paradise and elsewhere, all the arsons in California. You look at Lahaina, you look at the Netherlands, you look at France, all these farmers protest. They're all bitching about the same thing. Yep. There is a land grab going on where these um, kid fucking blood sucking Satan worshiping motherfuckers are going around and buying up land like crazy. Take your pick of whichever billionaire philanthropist lizard person that you uh, hero worship the most, whether it's Elon or Bill Gates or I mean, just go down the list. They're all fucking gobbling up fucking deeds and land and acres. 
Yeah, all about the they, needs, they want to build their own futuristic 15 minute cities where you're beholden to a corporation instead instead of uh, like a city state government type and, of thing and you can get matching ankle we're going back to the company store times like that rant cast video that he shared earlier today you know where where the boyfriend and girlfriend have got matching friendship rings and matching ankle monitoring bracelets yeah I thought that was Israel. Uh, was that Israel? I, I don't know. I, God damn, I covered a story back in 2021 that said that they were basically putting like uh, ankle bracelets on uh, COVID uh, patients yeah. to track them. Yeah, yeah. So, pff, yeah, I remember that. Might have been. That was three years maybe ago. That, maybe that's what that, or were they in Australia? They were speaking with a different accent. Hmm. Uh, but it could be New England or something. Um, but, you know, the, the point being that, that you know, although it was a dystopian video, it was romantic, you know, because these were two lovers that were so well surveilled. <laughs> what, they were being oppressed together? Because <laughs> that's what it's all about? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Are we having fun in 2024 yet? Are you getting back up yet? Let's get fact harder. We're on the home stretch now. We've got the last 14 minutes. It's just about time to put the landing gear back out. Oh, you got a clock um, for the studio. That's awesome. We're going to have to turn the no smoking sign and seatbelt sign lights back on here shortly. But uh, uh, before we get to that... I beat around the bush. I guess before we end the broadcast, I might try to sneak in Dead Fellas remix of Phosphorus Eye. Oh yeah. He he wanted this remix to happen so bad. And at the point when I literally had to record the vocals, I was kind of like, wow, I even named this remix the Palato remix. And he just played the June version on the radio, which I had, you know, I'm just glad the song got played, whatever version. But, you know, when I then let Dead Fella know that um, I just recorded the vocals um, and the song's already played on the radio, he's like, how? I haven't even mixed the vocals. I said, well, they the have version the that you schedules him, and stuff. You, you gave them a version of the song about 36 hours ago, and they're now playing it. And I That's think right. 36 hours ago, when you gave that to Sean and James in New Mexico, maybe they didn't think, mm, we should probably wait till Wednesday because I think they're going to re record this. Right next 36 hours because isn't that what most musicians do when you send music to a studio yeah oh, wait 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 wait! don't play that version we've got a brand new version we just finished this morning um after you already take yeah, the they show. don't they don't do that for those of you who are <laughs> keeping score at home they don't <laughs> so let's see here it's like we got it all right let's go that's taken care of we don't have to think about it anymore we're on to the next thing I guess I will log into Odyssey because uh, we're not going to use the Rumble link to this song. We're going to use no? the Odyssey. Okay. On the Odyssey. I mean, Odyssey now. Yeah. Because Odyssey is awesome. Yeah. Odyssey is like a real free speech network where you know you don't have to wear a trucker hat or a fedora. That's right. You, you can just wear, you know, you can wear a headdress. I don't care. Appropriate, Fiona. I'm cool with it. Do I, you. I can honestly life. say I have never had a problem with Odyssey at all. Matter of fact, uh, the times that I've had to reach out to them for assistance, they have been extremely helpful and extremely responsive. Well, wow, that's could like not the complete ask opposite for, of rock band. Yeah. <laughs> No, I could not ask for a better distribution platform. I really couldn't. There it is. So we've got the Odyssey Dead Fella Remix. Copy and go to Discord. I did put it up on BitChute 
and Rumble. And I'm actually going to put this song up on YouTube after broadcast, um, which will probably get my YouTube channel killed again. But, uh, Meh. <laughs> like I At fucking this care. Point, yeah. <laughs> What's one more? Eh, just throw one more on the pile. Fuck it. Just I mean, I, I'm pretty much down. made um, Eagle Scout in terms of deplatform bandage. Um, let me make sure this is the Palato remake. Yeah, that's the new one. Yep. Uh, and that song, I think, <laughs> is four minutes long. So. All right. Let's that go means ahead, we got man. six. We got six more minutes to chew the fat and wag the chin. It's only good. Oh, well, I wanted to go ahead and watch it now. Oh, okay. You, or you wanted to to no, that, that's send fine. Then we'll do our our thing after because it's only right. three minutes and fifty five seconds. Um, and uh, before we hit play on this, if you have any snack food or anything to eat, I would just ask. That you stop eating while the video is played. And then you can resume eating at the end of the video. There's nothing disgusting or nasty on it. It's just, I don't know. I think it's kind of rude to sit there and eat when you're watching emaciated starving. Anyways, I've said enough. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Free Palestine. Oh, it doesn't play automatically. I actually have to hit the button. It's a long wait for one meal. Men, women and children scramble to get their bowls filled with whatever is being served. That fella put a lot into this song. That's why I wanted to get it out there for him. Spent a lot of time making this remix. And it turns out they're literally starving to death in the Gaza Strip right now. Yeah. In case you missed it. Yeah, well, they haven't been able to get food in for how many weeks now? Since October the 7th. Yeah. Y'all follow Steve. Ain't no 
no hope for citizen in the Knesset. Ain't no rights for the man to the Jordan. Ain't no fight, it's just torture for sport. Just keep your eyes on the skies, white phosphorus You know, I've seen the same look on people's faces when they're waiting in line at McDonald's. You know, rest resting your chin on your hand and how much longer till I get my fake food like substance. Yeah. My that was McNutton. powerful, man. That was really powerful. I I mean I you know, even though it had already played on media bar. I, I gave it my all on the vocals and, and I gave it my all on the video. And that's the first video I ever made with no watermark. Oh. There's no tacky, pretentious watermark on that video of um, carving emaciated um, Hamas sympathizers. Because <laughs> Israel has a right to defend itself. Yeah. Well, you know, stop genociding so much, Israel, or we're going to say that you're genociding. Well, they're just trying to uh, they're trying to get Goldstein, <laughs> right? Goldstein keeps hiding down there in the yeah. tunnels and, uh, <laughs> you know, Emmanuel Goldstein. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Because we've always been well, at war with East Asia. Thank you so much for playing that, that video and airing that uh, premiering that awesome dead fella version that's what we do here so yeah um and you know it, it it all started out just a simple little melody uh i think i can bang this out in about 15 seconds let's see if it picks up on the mic probably won't <laughs> For a size, but yeah. could, could you hear the piano picking up there? A little bit. Some was muffled, <laughs> some wasn't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure which microphone I'm actually being picked up on. I think it's using. Huh. I think it's using the laptop and not the. No, I don't think yeah, it's laptop because you know I'm not getting much room noise. I'm definitely going to say it's the laptop and not this microphone. No. Which well, I mean, you're coming in good, so. Yeah, so because I, I sounds moved good. this microphone and I moved this microphone over to pick up the keyboard and oh. uh, it's not, oh, you're not going to hear this microphone. Two minute head. warning. <laughs> Actually, less than two minute warning, I think. Oh man, aren't you getting stoked for tomorrow night? I mean, what we're getting packed hard now, but I'm going to tell you what, buddy. Nobody goes on a rant like Chris Rantcast. Oh, I know. I can't wait. I'm hoping he wants oh. to do some open lines because that would be oh. awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get Rob and some other guys in on that action too. Yeah. So, everyone, bring your. Uh, igloo coolers and your blankets and everything to the amphitheater tomorrow night it's gonna be gonna be a barn burner and your doobage don't forget oh the yeah doobage. definitely bring the weeds um next week uh think have we completely taken down george washington i mean we can always go for another round we yeah we shit on washington already pretty sure we already shit on jefferson 
Shit yeah. on Lincoln. Yeah. Shit on Hamilton. Jackson, maybe. I was thinking about that this morning. Like, you don't hear people talking about Andrew Jackson much anymore. Yeah. You know, it turns out, as a Cherokee, still got an axe to grind against Andrew Jackson. Well, there so, you go. Uh, now we have a target. Suggestion, we're, we're, we're going Andrew Jackson next week. So That's next right. Thursday, it's going to be the Hermitage special. You Nashville heard it here Cashville first, episode. Folks. That's right. Nashville, Cashville, coming for you, Jackson. There you go. Coming for you, buddy. Try and wipe out the Cherokee. But you didn't know one day there was going to be a Yona with eight Yona links and counting. Oh, shit. Take that, Take that genocide. That's called a cliffhanger, ladies and gentlemen. You'll just have to tune in <laughs> next week to uh, find out exactly what the Yona means. The toxic says the ways that the young to you in the go, huh? There you go. Good night, everybody. <laughs>